Hi guys, what's up? It is now September, so we are doing our September 2017 illustrated calendar page. Let's get started. So we're starting with our usual supplies, a piece of cold pressed 140 pound watercolor paper. I've got my number grid on a piece of graph paper, so that helps me keep it straight. And then I've transferred it to my tracing paper. And then of course I've written out the word September a whole bunch of different times, used graph paper to help me keep it so, sort of straight and symmetrical. You can see this one here, it was sort of a little more jaunty. Um, that wasn't quite the look I was going for, so I moved the lettering in sort of a more sophisticated uh, direction. And you can only, you know, get to the place you want to be by practicing and trying different things. So just have fun with it. When you're ready, transfer your word onto a piece of tracing paper. And then you can just use a piece of carbon transfer paper to transfer transfer your graph uh, or your, your numbers um, and, your, and your word onto the watercolor paper. So you're just going to make sure they're pretty much centered on your piece of watercolor paper. And then just take a nice sharp pencil and uh, transfer everything. So go over it. And you'll see I've transferred my grid there. And then I'm going to um, put the word where I want it according to sort of where that number grid is. And same deal. Nice sharp pencil, transfer paper dark side down, and just go over everything once and get a nice transfer. And that's what it looks like. And at this point, you can take your Pigma Micron or a similar artist pen and go over all the numbers and the letters. And just do it slowly and carefully. I'm going to start here with the letter E. I always leave the first letter until the end because that first letter is a little larger and the look of it sort of depends on how the rest of the letters look. So that's why I've left the S for the end. Um, but I am going to go over all the letters and then of course I'm going to thicken the down strokes of each letter and that gives us our faux calligraphy look. And then I'll go back in and I will color in those down strokes. And I'm using the 05 Pigma Micron. That's sort of my Goldilocks pen. But for this part, you might want to switch to a smaller nib because it is uh, quite precise. And of course, with all that stuff done, we get to our image, our illustration. And this month, we're doing a plant, some sort of beautiful plant inside of a bell jar. Just not quite ready to do the fall images yet. I'm still running the shop here, and it still kind of feels like the last month of summer, sort of. So we'll get to fall stuff in October. But for this month, we're going to do this pretty bell jar. I've got my final illustration transferred onto tracing paper. And then, of course, I'll take the image and use my transfer paper to transfer it onto the watercolor paper. Once the transfer is done, you can sort of fill in any little areas, just get it looking perfect um, with your pencil. And at that point, once you're happy with the image, you're ready to paint. And I, as usual, I'm just using some craft quality watercolor discs. They are just from the dollar store, nothing special, and you don't need anything special or fancy. And what I'm doing here is I've mixed up a light sort of warm green color, and I'm just going to do half of each of some of these larger leaves. And um, that's a really simple way to create a sort of sophisticated look when you're painting and you don't have a lot of experience is to, you know, add one color first and then go back in and add a darker color on the other side. So um, it's very simple. It's almost just like coloring in. And you can see I'm doing that on some of the smaller leaves as well. And I'm just playing around and really not worrying about it too much and just adding nice splashes of color. And I like to see when the watercolor dries, sort of what it looks like. And you don't always know. And that perfectly imperfect look is what I really love about the medium of watercolor. Once the green is done, uh, I'm just going to add, I'm going to use a bigger brush here to add just a sort of swoosh of gray on some of the outer parts of the bell jar. And you can see I've added a little bit of dark there and then I'm going to sort of fade it out with my larger brush. So less is more when it comes to the black on the bell jar so, or the gray, so just be careful. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a gray or black on my pot here at the bottom, but I think that would have also looked nice as maybe a terracotta, but you can choose to do the, the flower pot any color and same with the flower itself. I'm I want a white flower for my illustration, so I'm just using a bit of gray to shade. And while we're letting that paint dry, I'm going to show you how to do the illustration or how I approached this illustration. I started with graph paper, 
and I just did a cross there. And using graph paper and creating a cross, anytime you need something to be symmetrical, that will really help you. And it doesn't mean you need to count the little squares and make the bell jar perfectly symmetrical. It's gonna help you create a look, um, an illustration that looks good and not wonky, but isn't perfect because perfect is boring. And now for these leaves, I want to create some leaves that are sort of coming out. They're approaching the viewer. They're coming towards you. So I'm just drawing them straight on, sort of coming out towards the person viewing the illustration. And then I'm adding my flower pot and sort of putting it in behind these leaves. So creating a lot of nice depth in a simple illustration. And I'm making sure that I'm doing leaves of different sizes. So I've got some larger ones, some medium sized ones, and some tiny little delicate ones. Um, and just having the different sizes will help your illustration come to life and really pop. And I'm gonna add a flower here. And if you choose to do a flower, it's nice to keep it off to the side. So just don't put it right in the center. That's gonna help your illustration to look a little more sophisticated. And if you choose to do more than one flower, uh, threes or odd numbers, threes or fives, are, will often look a lot nicer than just having two. Two is very hard to uh, make a design look nice. So that's my illustration there. And now I'll show you how to do a few different succulents and cactuses in case you want to put a cactus inside that bell jar. Let's start with a chubby, spiky little sp succulent. I'm just doing four little triangles and then adding two in behind those uh, original four. A few spots and that one comes together. That one's very hard to screw up. He's a lot of fun to draw. Uh, for a cactus, I'll do an oblong shape with a little flower on top, two lines down the middle, and then the trick here is adding X's and just keeping the X's in rows, so keeping them sort of symmetrical, and that'll look really nice, and it's an effective way to quickly illustrate a cactus. And this guy is just made up of sort of lumpy, oblong shapes, any shapes, and then I do these little sort of bumps in rows, and uh, you could add as many little arms on him as you like, and just put a little pot or whatever at the bottom. So if you wanna put some succulents and cactuses in that bell jar, you go right ahead, because that would be super cute. So now that our paint has dried, I'm gonna take my Pigma Micron, the number 05 is my favorite for this portion, and I'm just gonna go over my lines and add lots of nice detail to my illustration. So just adding veining on all the leaves. And this is important uh, for the glass jar. I always draw a little highlight there. And then for the jar, I'll do two lines. So you're gonna see me go around the entire jar once. And that's fine, that gives the outline of the jar. But to make it look like glass, adding this double outline and making sure that the lines don't quite go together. So you're giving the jar some thickness. You're making it look like a thick piece of glass. And I just find that doing the double outline really brings it to life and makes it look like it is indeed a piece of clear glass. Right, and then my final point is as you illustrate the leaves, think about what different leaves look like. So some leaves are gonna have more teeth than others. That's those little jagged bits around the edges of the leaves. Some leaves are gonna be smooth, some are gonna be round, some are gonna be pointy. So adding some variety as you illustrate will help this illustration come alive and look really realistic, not too realistic, and sophisticated. Well, I hope you enjoyed this month's calendar page. I love creating these and I love hanging them up in the shop for the month. I'll be back next Friday with a really fun tutorial that I'm very, very excited about. Um, so look for that next Friday. In the meantime, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in a week. Thanks for watching.